Okay, so a uh, question, how many, now when I say, when I talk about stuff like this, how many of you guys, and you, when I mention stuff like this, talk about stuff like this, people are automatically, the word conspiracy or conspiracy theorist comes to, automatically comes to people's mind. Those were, that word and those that word conspiracy theory, that, that, that word was created and injected whenever you talk about something that goes against the norm or the scientific norm. And there is a bit of cognitive dissonance that gets placed or gets when when people hear that word that automatically people think oh that's just silly that's just somebody that you know that's crazy or something like that see how that's when you hear that word automatically you switch over to somebody you're thinking oh they're crazy to believe something like that but see that's programming when we hear that word automatically we think of somebody that's crazy when they believe a different way you know uh, take for instance the the World Trade Center you know there are a lot of people and I'm, I tend to be one of them just because of a lot of reasons and I think there are a lot of you out there that question that the same way I believe that just the planes took those buildings down. There's a lot that don't make that, that just does not make sense about that. And you know, and it's it. I won't go and talk talking a lot, a whole awful lot about it because you know, I'm you know because I'm I want to get you know the gospel out and you know I like to start kind of if I switch if I've got something on my mind <laughs> to bring to the table uh, kind of stimulating conversation uh, so but something for instance like that automatically when somebody mentions something about that people say conspiracy theorists and automatically people just switch over and say yeah they're just crazy you know no, and then nobody wants us to take them seriously, no matter what, no matter what the kind of research they've done. But when people start thinking more about it, look and finding out more about it, and and when people like start watching more videos and more evidence about something like that, and start realizing that the the stuff makes sense of what they're talking about, and it can be it, it can be several different things, not just about that. There can be a lot of different things that especially a lot of things you know 10 20 years ago that would be that would have been considered a conspiracy theory or conspiracy that are finding out today that are actually truth or actually happen uh, you know they probably would have thought the same thing about you know like uh, I mean some others were talking the other night about you know, after World War II, when they brought the Germans over, you know, under Operation Paperclip, you know, to, to help start kickstart NASA off, and you know, we got some, Russia got some. The guy uh, that uh, experimented uh, on all the Jews, uh, his name's. His name escapes me right now. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Mingla, Joseph Mingla. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. It was said that he went down to South America and continued on with his experiment under some kind of, some kind of government help. So that would be, have, would have been considered conspiracy. But now, you know, you can pretty much we we know Werner Werner von Braun helped kickstart NASA with Jack Parsons, who were disciples of Aleister Crowley, who was one of the most evil men, along with Hitler and the rest of them. Uh, Crowley was you know was satanic worshiper, and it, at one point he wanted to be called the Great Beast. Yeah, real nice guy. Helped 
created the uh, the OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis, you know, an occult group that Jack Parsons was headed up. You know, the 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 uh, Jet Propulsion Lab that existed. Jack Parsons was instrumental in creating it, but he was a follower. He was an occultist. See how far the occult goes down into our government? This is not conspiracy. This is out there. This is, you know. So, before people start yelling, conspiracy theory, you know, check it out. Don't just cut it off. And what I wanted to really get to the, 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 the meat on the bone here. I want to mention like children in schools they are really what they're getting even in, well even in colleges they are really getting a revisionist's history of things things that never happened or things that happened and it's been twisted around I'm thinking, wow, what all? You know, and it's, what do you, you know, I really, really love to see some of the stuff. You know, I don't, I don't remember a lot of, you know, well, being older now, you know, I do my own studies and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't remember a lot of what I learned back in elementary school or middle school, you know, I just, I just, I just wanted to be out of there, <laughs> you know, I wanted to be home so I could ride my bike, you know, be outside, you know, <laughs> not be home on, a, on an electronic gadget sitting inside all the time, yeah, it was, that was the days we got outside and actually played outside, you know, they, so, but anyway, but, you know, but yeah, they are, and, and that, back in that day, I'm sure it, we were the same as well, we were dealing with the revisionist history, but one one day when the Lord finally opens your eyes to things and say, no, this, you know, this stuff is how it happened. Uh, just the same thing with, you know, with the Big Bang and that version of cosmology versus biblical cosmology. Which one are you going to believe? Well, of course, we believe biblical cosmology. Uh, Evolution, you know, versus, you know, creation. We believe creationism. So, but, you know, the children, and especially in public, you know, you homeschool your kids, you know, well, then, hoorah, you know, good, good for you. Uh, people hate, people hate it when you homeschool your children because you're get, you're, you're feeding them biblical truths and they don't want that. They want your kid in the public system getting fed the revisionist history and all the lies that go along with it. And their big excuse is, well, they won't know how to operate out in public and operate around people when they're like that because they can't be around people. Well, you know, that they, they go to church and they, not, they can operate around people and they can get out and, you know, but, but they're leaving God out of the equation, too. So, you know, God take them out, bless them, make them a powerhouse out in the real world, in business, and most importantly, for God, spiritually. So, you know, that doesn't bother me when I hear that excuse. All that is is an excuse. But that's one of the biggest ones you hear. So see, some of these states, they don't know. They hate it. Hate it. But they are the kids. And I hate it. I feel sorry for them. It bothers me when I think about that. You know, they're, they're, they're dealing with lies. They're getting fed. They're getting spoon-fed lies. And, you know, they come home and mom and dad are trying to teach them one thing. They go to school and the teachers are pushing another narrative to them so they're stuck in the you know, middle you know when they're young of course when they're older you know a little bit of understand when they're young you know it's just like a tug of war but that's why we need to especially in 
churches to have good uh, Sunday school teachers as well. And, well, good men and women in church too if the, if the children have a question, you know, that the adult can, you know, be able to tell them, say, you know, well, you know, this this is the way it is, you know. You know, get with get with the mom and dad and say, you know, hey, he's got this question. You know, you can answer it or we can answer it, you know. So, you know, have good leadership in the church uh, with your, you know, have good communication, parents, with the teacher. So it's if they have any questions that they might have. Uh, because uh, I don't know what all the curriculum is nowadays. You parents, I'm sure you probably, I hope you do, um, you know, probably know what's being fed to them. And I know some, I've known some that's, uh, a, fr a friend of mine at one point, when his, you know, daughter was younger, he, uh, I think she was being fed, of course, being fed the whole evolution narrative. And he come home and eat, of course. I don't think he was in really in church at the time either, but, you know, he was even like, well, there's some aspects of evolution I believe in just because of it. And, and I was thinking, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Uh, but, uh, kind of that was the point of it talking about all this you know have your mind your heart your spiritual eyes open uh, the enemy that is one this goes along with the spiritual warfare stuff and I tell you we was going to hit some more on that in little ways and other ways have because the enemy that's one of his and you guys know this you know you go you guys know it more well than I do because, you know, me and my wife don't have children, probably never will at this point. But, you know, if, if, you know, being watchman, being a spiritual ward, evangelist, you know, it, enemy is definitely going to come at you through your children. He can get your children messed up with this revisionist history and these lies. He's going to damage you that way. Because I know you guys love your children. I know you do. You want to see them reared up. You want to rear them up, and you want to see them reared up by your Sunday school teachers. In truth, uh, <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to get them reared up properly in the public schools. That's why you have to double down uh, with the uh, biblical truth in in home and uh, knowing what they're doing and what they're listening to and watching and you know you know there's some and it's sad and I did a video I forget what it's, it's probably a year maybe even a year old at this point about this one guy I think his name was Sean Sellers it had a book that I took I showed and it was called the uh, it was written I think back in the 80s and I managed to get a copy of it on uh, Amazon because it told the story of this guy called Sean sellers that got involved in Satanism and he his parents didn't know what he was into and he ended up murdering both his parents and just murdering uh, like a, a a store clerk and was in, involved in a, a cult satanic cult and uh, in his closet he had a, a, a an altar built up of bones and a bunch of everything and that was his altar that he prayed to Satan. Parents had no idea. Stayed out of his room. Oh, he needs his privacy. Parents. <laughs> it's not, I know it's not funny, but it's just, just parents know what your kids are doing because that's, you know, that's, that's just as real and going on today as it was back then you know and now you've got the internet you've got YouTube you've got the, the dark web even worse that pulls people into this stuff 
even greater so nowadays because people's leaving the faith the following way is happening and they're going into other religions other beliefs Lord help oh my 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 so we're going to have to be strong brothers and sisters people of God we got you know and we are if we accept it if we exercise our faith in Christ under the authority of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost we've got power over the enemy if we just take hold and use it boom use it use that authority don't be afraid the most they can do to you is kill you in this flesh you know what Oorah. Bravo. They have just sent you or I home to be with the Lord. Huh. <laughs> they can't. They, they're not going to take your soul to hell. If you're saved, you're just going home. Guess what? I got news for them. They're never going to experience the heavenly realm. They are sealed to experience the lake of fire. Satan, the demonic experience, the fallen angels, they are sealed for the lake of fire. They can do what they want to, but when I go, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to that new heavens, new earth, and I've got a home in that new Jerusalem. And yes, I hope that I know they're around because the spiritual warfare is going on right now. I hope they. And I know that I know that they do. They're hearing every word that I'm saying. And I hope it's just making them so mad they can't stand it. Boom. <laughs> Today we are going to be in the book of Romans, chapter two. And I think we're going to start at verse one. But first, this is Tim with the Word of Life Church. We're located at fifteen sixteen Midway Road, Straw Plains, Tennessee. 37871, that is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor there is Junior Mount. On behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, I'd like to offer you an open invitation. Come out, be with us for service. Go ahead and give you our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m. Come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service. And we also have midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. PM. So, as I said, make plans. Come out and be with us for service. I think you'll have a wonderful time. We have been having some wonderful services. Spirit, God has been moving, and it's just been it's been glorious. I mean, wow. Uh, praying for revival, and you know, revival breaks out. And I'm not talking about just you know just a couple of two night services. You know, I'm like, man, I'm just praying for one of those revivals of old work. You know, it just just. Spirit of God moves every night, and you just leave there, just you know, just so full of the Spirit that you know. You, and afterwards, you just about crash. You know, you're so full of the Spirit of God before and what during service and everything, uh, and, and crash in a good way, you know. Oh, uh, but uh, but yeah, but uh, that's uh, that, that is a good thing. So, but anyway, make plans to come out and be with us if you'd like. Uh, we we'll love having visitors. We'll make you feel welcome. And uh, I think there's any uh, announcements right now. Um, if I think of one, <laughs> but, but by the end of the uh, video, I'll give it out, or, or the next video I do. I, yeah, guys, get, have to, guys, start reminding me about this stuff, <laughs> so I can uh, start. Uh, giving out stuff so I, at least remind me to write it down okay oh lord help romans chapter 2 and verse 1 uh we'd like to have fun you know you know we say you can have fun you can enjoy yourself and laugh at yourself you know and like i said have fun in this world and do it without sin you don't need to have sin don't want to have sin don't crave to have sin anymore just enjoy life and come through it walk through it as pilgrims passing through knowing that you've got your heavenly reward waiting for you amen that's that's awesome. So I'm going to be in the book of Romans and talking about and 
about being inexcusable. What? Well, and judging. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> looking around. Everybody, imagine everybody looking around. Judging. Oh, no. This is one of the messages. And condemning. Uh-oh. Feel, feel the feet going under the bench and grabbing the bench or something like that. Who among you? I can raise my hand to at times judged or condemned somebody maybe even before you knew the facts about something or maybe you did it judged or condemned somebody during a time when you were sitting in church thinking you were being holy and righteous and maybe you had just got finished doing the same thing Maybe you, you may, maybe you just repented over it, or maybe you had. Let's read the verse. It says, "Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest." The same thing. Oh, oh watch, watch the toes. You don't we'll have to curl them off. They're going to get stomped on. Has anyone been guilty of that before? Maybe the kind of that holiness syndrome. And don't get me wrong. I'm not using that as a, not using that as a, as a, as a slang term, or, uh, so to speak, or that that is as we shouldn't because we are we are called to holiness, but doing it in the wrong fashion, judging somebody, maybe somebody that's coming to the church that's weak in the faith that's just got saved. That maybe for some reason you've got something personal against that you've not come up to him and said, you know, I need to make this right with you. Which is what you're supposed to do. If you have aught against your brother, you go to him. And make things right. You don't get on Facebook, you don't slander people, you don't throw stuff around, you don't get on text, you don't get on the phone, none of that junk. Gone are the days of just, you know, going home and, you know, or staying after church and, you know, whispering to people or going home and getting on the phone and calling everybody. Now it's social media and text and, you know, it's much worse. got a problem go to the person but if it's your brother in Christ that's coming in gotten saved having a problem don't sit there and smack them down to kick a person while they're down if they need help help them or don't say a word If you don't have anything, don't say a word. Let them, you know, or, or, or at least if you mean anything, holler. It's kind of my my catchphrase, I guess. That old Southern draw. <laughs> if you need anything, give me a holler. Need prayer, need talk to, or you know, whatever. You know, give me a holler. That's the help we're supposed to give out. But a person comes up and prays, gets up. Now I'll say this, I'm not one, I think there's certain things, especially before or after you pray, whatever it is, something like that, you really don't get up. And if you want to confess something, there's certain ways that you can confess without confessing something out in the open. 
which are some things that you should that you shouldn't say. There's no need. God already knows. No one else needs to know. But see, one of the worst things right there is if somebody comes to the altar. Do you know what they're doing? And you're sitting there thinking, yeah. Finally, finally decided to come there. But yet, for some reason, you're doing it and it's okay for you. You're immune. Why? It says, you condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doeth the same things. It says, for when, let's, read it, let's, let's read it again. It says, thou, thou art excusable, O man, who, whosoever thou art that judgest, you're sitting there doing the judging. It says, for where thou judgest another, you're judging that person there. It says, thou condemnest thyself. Maybe nobody else knows. But the most important part, one knows the two most important persons no, you and the Lord so for thou that judges do us the same things may not be just you maybe somebody else maybe several people saying what, what, like what whatever whatever sin you want to slide in there best thing for you to find you a place right beside them because you're not immune there's no immunity you gonna have to get you you got to come to you know you, some people have have that whole have that holiness syndrome to where it's like I'm bulletproof sin proof I, you know, I got that. I'm, I got I, I, have you, has anyone ever met, know someone like that? Bulletproof. Nothing can hit me. I've got that raised brow. You can preach on me. Don't care if you if you even know what's what I'm doing. I've got that raised brow and that nose and that proud look and that scowl. And I've seen that happen before. Who, oh, brother? I ain't stay on no nobody are you kidding me it doesn't it doesn't matter it's not the point it was a bad situation I've seen a lot of bad situations unfortunately you hate to see stuff like that but in a lot of ways that helps you grow and see stuff that you don't want to be involved with or see happen and it Helps you grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But don't get the holiness syndrome in the wrong direction. That is the wrong direction. It's in verse 2, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Which one is the worst one there? <laughs> that's a simple equation right there. It's the one that's sitting there judging, that's doing the same thing. Hey, that person right there at the altar is getting right with God, submitting themselves to the mercy of God. You know, the person sitting there judging doing the same thing, sitting there with that proud look. Well, well I knew they wasn't going to last very long. I knew they uh, what they were doing. They were going to fall. Bro, this is this kind of a smackdown message. I, this is what the Lord, I, I, where I was, I was, I was going back to Romans. This is where the Lord told me to stop, and this was where the message hit. Somebody out for someone out there, maybe not for the exact person, but it's for to go on further. I don't know. That's what that's what it's for. Let's say there's too much of this going on. 
in the house of God. Or so-called houses of God. Well, brother, you, how, how dare you say that? Well, Spirit of God has to be there in operation. Ichabod can't be written above the door. Right? The Spirit of the Lord has departed this place. The Spirit of God still has to be there when the people come in, right? Can't be a bunch of stuff going on and I'm not going to go into a bunch of scenarios when I say stuff. You guys can, you guys know when I say stuff, you can come up with your own ideas about things that are going on. When the enemy comes in the church with his mindset on destroying a place, the people's doing anything wrong, and he gets a foothold in there. The people don't rely on the Spirit of God and exercise their power through the Spirit of God and get right with the Lord in repentance, then he is going to destroy that church. But the, the judgment of God, according to what? Truth. Against them which commit such things. person that judges will be judged according to what they're judging the other person for. Without a doubt. Maybe not right then. Maybe later on. Stuff's going to be shouted from the rooftops. See? That's what this heard. We heard it said, oh my goodness, if we had, if we had a penny. <laughs> That not just not just the present church, but other churches, you know. Hey, you can fool me unless the Spirit of God show me, give me the spiritual eyes of discernment on a person, per se. Use discernment knowing what the enemy's doing, but on a person. You might can fool me or the rest of the congregation. Even the pastor. <laughs> Thank you, fooling God. Who in their right mind would think that they are fooling the Lord? That like, well, you know, I've said I said it many times before. It almost seems like to me sometimes, and this just uh, this just I don't know. One point, maybe this this was this came. I guess this come from the Lord at one point, but it it seems to me at some points. Some people act like when they actually go out the doors of the church, after they shake the preacher's hand and go out the door of the church, they act like suddenly God becomes deaf and blind to what they're doing. It almost seems like that. But we know that's, that's not the case. You know, for one thing, we are the church. Amen. We come into that building that we set aside as the worship building. We are the church. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 3 it says, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Question mark. You think you're going to escape by doing such things? You got to remember what 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 was talked about in the previous chapter. A lot of bad stuff. Just talking about all kinds of sin, sins of sodomy and. A, a, a lot of other stuff. So one wonders if that was carrying over with this right here. 
and it was talking to the church there. My guess is probably yes, since it's linked up with this. You never know what's going on through a person's mind. You know, in the old saying, too, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Well, you never know what's, what goes on behind this right here in the inner mind. See, God already knows what goes on in our very heart of hearts. So a lot of people, and <laughs> generally this only happens normally between husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Well, I don't, I don't know what you're thinking normally. You, you never share with me. You never open your heart to me. How many people? How many? How many guys? Have you heard that? I'm not. I'm not making fun of you ladies okay sometimes it's a guy vice versa that does that uh but you no know, normally we guys like to kind of keep in a you know closed heart you know keep the keep the uh the inner heart for you know yourself you know private area god already knows everything you in and out back and forth So whatever you got hit, you've not got anything hidden from the Lord. There's no hiding place from the Lord. You know it says it all. It, 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 you know go go into the rocks and caves. Go to the the bottom of the ocean. Go to the deep places in the earth. You know you, you're not going to hide from him. There's no place in all of creation in all of physical reality, dimensional reality if there be a dimensional reality other than this and other than the third the first, second, third heaven as God's word describes that's worthy that's, that's really worthy of discussion that's, that's, that's fun discussion right there but you do us the same so how are you going to escape the judgment of God. See, you already put you already placed the judgment on the person already. So guess what? God's, God's already put the judgment upon you. One wonders the judgment may be in your mind that you've put upon that person. What well, kind of judgment? Well, who knows? Maybe in your mind, maybe you're saying, "What this person deserves this." Well, maybe God's saying, "Okay, you've spoken it. Guess what? The judgment you just said, I'm going to put the exact same judgment upon you." Whoa! Uh oh! Now we're getting somewhere. Look out. Better not. Don't do it. Somebody comes to that altar, you show compassion, mercy. Go pray. If the ladies come if a lady comes to the altar, let the ladies come up there and pray for them. You stand aside, lift your hands to the Lord, pray that they that, that person has been shown mercy and 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 puts forgiveness man comes to the altar same thing you, you men you go up there you lay, lay hands on them and you pray that the Lord shows them mercy and that they find mercy and find help in time of need let them call for the elders of the church come up and pray because it could be you that's up there needing help and mercy long suffering patience <laughs> all sorts of things you might be the one needing that help 
It says in verse 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Hallelujah. Some people, and you see it, it's almost like the almost like the prodigal son when he come the the brother of the prodigal son I'm not giving the names he said when he come when he come back the the, the the brother was jealous he said you know kill the fat calf you know do this do that you know he was jealous that he did all that that the father told him to do all that He had a problem. He's, you know, he's like, you know, you won't even do this. So I can have, you know, a, a party. You know, I have a gathering for my friends. You know, and you welcome him back. You know, he spent your your money. You know, his the, his his and his part of his inheritance, your money, and you you know you're gonna welcome him back and everything like that. Kind of the same situation right here. It said, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? The father of the prodigal son had goodness goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering. Welcome them back the same way the Lord does us. See, the brother despised that in the Father. But see, the goodness See, the prodigal son was just coming back because he thought, oh, my father, if he'll just make me a servant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he'll just make me a servant, I'll have a place, I'll have a roof over my head. It's, at least I won't have to eat the husk of the swine. <laughs> but he said, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. He said, your brother was dead. But now, He's alive. And he's back. It's time to welcome him back in. You guys know the story. Ride right along with what this is right here. Somebody comes out and they come back or they have a problem. They fall, they stumble, they fall flat on their face and they fall hard. God can show them the riches his goodness, forbearance, and his long suffering, his patience. Don't despise that. The person was lost or, or had become backslidden. But the Lord led them back because it says the goodness of God is going to lead people to repentance. The same once again. If it was you, you would want that as well. So why are you going to put that on somebody else? Why are you going to put that on someone else? Well, you know, some people. You know that there again. You know that old saying. I know this is just these are just old saying. Uh, somebody becomes too. Too heavenly, what's the old saying goes? Too heavenly to become, or has become too heavenly uh, to be of, and to be of no earthly good, or something like. I think it goes something like that. I can't it, it escapes me right now, but it goes something like that. Well, I don't want to be any earthly good, as in like you know the things of the world, but having while I'm down here. To work for the Lord, to show forbearance, long suffering, and goodness towards someone that needs it, which is everyone. Now, the other side, let's flip the coin over. I can't be, although. We would still want to. I can't be if someone has done something to seal their fate. You know it, and I know it. What do you mean, brother? Well, if they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost, 
God's word tells us it ain't. It's not going to be forgiven in this world or the next to come. That's not. That's not, brother Tim. I didn't write that. That's in God's word. God said that. That's a serious penalty. That means you have become unredeemable. You, you, you know, I'm sorry. The time comes, if you take the mark of the beast, that means you have totally rejected God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Ghost. You have, you know, and you sealed your fate. You have become unredeemable. Nah, I'll just pop this little chip out of my hand or my forehead. It's going to be more than, it's not going to be just one little microchip that you can just pop out and all of a sudden, as some teaches, and then you're going to be, you can, you can come back to repentance. It's not going to be that way. It's going to do something to where you will become unredeemable according to the Word of God. And at the very beginning, you're choosing that over the Lord anyway. Period. Whatever it is along with that. I think it'll be something related to technology that's going to be part of it, but it's going to be many things leading up to the mark and all that. But you are rejecting God. You are in rejecting the Lord Jesus and you are taking it up allegiance with the Antichrist. Sorry that these people done that, but God's word. If they knew it, then they ought to follow it. Don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. God's word tells you how not to. Of course, the mark of the beast is not in play yet, thankfully. So while now you got a chance, it says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It's in verse five. Let's try to get let's try to get a couple more in before it's too late here. Verse five says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, oh see, that's hard to chip away at somebody when they have that. A hard and impenitent heart. It says, After thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You even got a hard heart and impenitent heart knowing. that the day of wrath and revelation and the righteous judgment of God is coming. You're building up against it. Let me read that again. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You're building up and cultivating the wrath in your heart against the day of wrath, which is the righteous judgment of God. That's coming. Who will, in verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. You are hardening your heart. The devil, Satan, is coming to your heart. You're hardening your heart. You have allowed an opening somewhere, somehow. And he has come in and taken up abode in your heart, the enemy. And you become hard, impenitent. You've got wrath. Not a state to be in. You're even going against, you've got wrath against the righteous judgment of God that's coming. And you know, a person like that, out of that wrath, they're going to be deceived. Easily deceived. 
and in some cases, even wanting, saying, I'm going against this, even to the point of saying that they hate the things of God and will want to go after the things of the enemy. They say they hate the church, they hate the people of God, the Christians, and they will go after the things of the enemy. Even to the point of going and following after the Antichrist. Part of the falling away. To the point that they might even eventually will take, if they don't turn from their wicked ways, will take the mark. But what did it say in verse 6? He said, who will win, uh, talking about God, he said, who will render to every man according to his deeds? Friends, what a position to be in. Just because of something simple. See, we started with all something simple. But in, in chapter 1, all the stuff. See, we have time to go through all, the, all that plus this, but all the stuff, if you go back and read chapter 1, all the stuff that was going on the sodomy and all the other sexual sins and all the other sins and everything that was going on will lead you to this point right here. Not even all that stuff. Just the sin in your heart. Of judging of just normal stuff. Something small the devil can work with. See, if you give him something small to work with, he will make it large. If you allow him and get you to that point, it doesn't have to be something large like in the previous verse, something like an alternative lifestyle, as they say. It can be something. It can be something you're holding against a brother or sister in Christ, and it can get you so mad and drive you so uh, crazy and, and annoy you. And the enemy will play on that and work on that and stir that. To the point that you will get in, in this position that we just talked about. We said, "Give the enemy uh, an inch, and he'll become the ruler." And the other is saying, "Give the enemy an inch, and he'll take a mile." You know that kind of thing. Especially if you're not close with God, and you start drifting away because you get entangled of the things of the world. where all it would have taken would have been some mercy on your half, on your part, to kneel down beside that person that's come in. And you stand there without judgment in your heart, without anything in your heart other than goodness, goodness, excuse me, forbearance, long suffering, mercy, charity love for that person to pray for him and not show judgment and not have judgment of the same thing and doing the same thing in your life let me ask you tonight while we still got time if you're doing that if you're watching people come to the altar praying getting forgiveness you got stuff that in your life that you need swept out that you're judging people for and you know that you're guilty of guilty of the same exact thing and you're judging them for it let me ask you right now even before the next time you go to God's house if you're at home right now or wherever you are what we just read according to what God's going to do let me encourage you and invite you to get on your knees somewhere or bow your head down somewhere and you cry out to God for mercy forgiveness and for him to restore you amen you backslidden on the Lord you know the way back repentance 
Ask the Lord to forgive you. Come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Because if you've been walking with the Lord from your mouth out, you know what is coming. You know the judgment of God and what is coming. Now, sinner, if you've never known the Lord, the Lord Jesus died for you on that cross, and he did. Had a painful, excruciating death on that cross and died for you and rose on that third day. We're getting ready to celebrate Resurrection Day coming up. Arose on that third day, conquering death, hell, sin, the grave for you because he loved you more than anybody, more than any family member, or spouse, anybody. And he's invited you. He's tugging at your heart to come to an altar of repentance because you've led a sinful life. You're tired of it. It's left you high and dry. There's no pleasure in sin no more. He's offering you a way out because there's a heaven to gain, a hell to shun. There's only one of two places you're going to go when you close your eyes in this life, in death, heaven or hell. There's no in between. Eternal life or eternal judgment. Death. Eternal death. Eternal judgment. Punishment. Just ask the Lord. You want to be saved. You want him to come into your heart and save you. Take up a bow there and you will serve him the remainder of your days. And repent from your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you. So repentance is my end. Confession is made unto salvation. That may act that just pour your heart out to the Lord. And it's as I said, repentance or excuse me, confession is made unto salvation. Make a public declaration, tell people you've been saved. And you're saved. Once you ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you and ask him to forgive you, and you pour your heart out to the Lord and ask him and you and you've repented from your sins, you're saved. You can have a birthday when you do that. You have a second birthday. That's going to be the best birthday, though, that you can have. It's your spiritual birthday. Be saved. You'll have that assurance when you close your eyes in this life. You're going to open up. and You're going to be in heaven after that in glory and see the Lord. Get the Word of God. Get a King James Bible. Find a good fellowship of believers. Pray the Lord will send you to a good fellowship of believers where he can use you. So he places you in the body as it pleases him. Meantime, pray, study the word of God, find you a good teacher. On, on YouTube, there's plenty of good teachers to listen to. Visit some churches, you know, let the Lord lead and guide you to where he wants you to go. And he will show you. Amen. But the main thing is the main thing first. And that's the repentance from your sins. And asking the Lord in your heart to save you. The salvation comes first. No matter what people say, do the salvation comes first. And all the rest of the stuff will come after. All the other stuff will come after that. The repentance and salvation comes first. Amen. Well, that's what the Lord had for today. I hope someone got some something out of it. I've you know it's been kind of a little bit of a hammer message. Uh, it's it's for somebody so uh, Lord doesn't bring something forth without it being for somebody yeah, yeah. so uh, still don't, uh, can't remember any real announcements so <laughs> must, must be nothing so if it is next next I know, I'll uh, make sure and check with everyone <laughs> that way I'm not forgetting anything 
get it for the uh, next video. But anyway, God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ and each and every one of you. You prayer warriors, you know what's coming up. It's satanic holiday to counter, you know, Easter, Resurrection Day. I don't like to call it Easter because it's not, you know, that's... But uh, you know what's coming up, so pray. Uh, pray against all the stuff that's going to happen uh, in opposition against the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And, uh, you know, I said pray for one another, exhort one another, you know, lift one another up in prayer. Pray for all the churches, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, the sick and afflicted, the backslidden, the unsaved, that they come to the Lord and come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Amen. Amen. All right. Take care, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye now.